Our garden footbridge is off to a great start, and here's what the base looks like now, and how step by step we're taking easy shortcuts to our fairy tale bridge. With love for a country house. This is the back of a folding futon couch that we were planning to throw out. It was falling apart, but it really is a lot of free lumber. It seemed a shame to waste it, especially since we've been meaning to build a footbridge next to this ditch in our side yard. This was a small hole until someone dug it out and made it a lot deeper. But as you can see, there's a path next to the ditch and it gives us about 10 feet of space. So we thought we'd take a shortcut and use that futon to make a kind of bridge next to this ditch. And then we'd create a water feature in the ditch itself. And well, the idea is that this is the ditch on the right and the pavers will go over here on the left to support the futon. And then that futon won't come into contact with the soil anymore. And that should help prevent rot. And then we put the water feature off to the right here with some rocks and it should look pretty natural like a mountain stream. So we set up this work area and got to work making planks and fixing the futon by first cutting off the legs so it was nice and square and then we waterproofed it. We're using Bare Premium Waterproofing Wood Finish from the Home Depot and later we're going to put some pigment in this to color the top of the bridge so we're only going to paint one side of the planks for now. We left these planks out in the rain, well a couple of them out in the rain, and you could see that the water beaded right up on them and the only thing was it stayed tacky for a few days but we think that's because of the humidity in our area otherwise we really did like this product. So we're going to cut our planks at 31 inches. This will allow for an overhang on each side of that futon frame. So you want to make sure you have a good stable surface and after each cut, wait till that saw blade stops turning and that'll help prevent kickback before you move the wood. And don't forget your safety glasses, we always wear them. And so anyway, we're gonna cut 19 planks and we're gonna spread them evenly across this eight foot bridge. So now that we've got all the pieces together, we're gonna work on that foundation. The futon itself would be way too flimsy for big people to walk on, so the slats will actually be sitting on these pavers, and the frame of the futon will wrap around the sides of the pavers and hold everything steady. It's the slats that actually will keep this wood from touching the ground, and so long as we do a little landscaping around it. And the tricky part, though, is what took the most time was getting these pavers in the perfect position and then leveling them on very slopey, rocky ground. Hopefully you have some nice, smooth ground to work with, but what we found out was when we began digging in this area to sort of level things out and put some gravel, we ran into what we now call the monster rock. Here's the monster rock here. That monster wasn't going anywhere. So it was on to plan B. So what we ended up doing was leveling each paver by shimming under each one with rocks and bricks and this took like two hours spread across several very hot days. So one by one the pavers were raised or lowered to meet the slats so that the edge of the futon was pretty much clear of the ground and we could walk across it without wobbling. Well this took a lot of trial and error but finally we got there. You can see I'm stepping on it and it's pretty level now. We're checking the edges to make sure they're not going to be touching the ground and finally we were able to lower the frame into place and now what we can do is add some gravel around these pavers and in between all that rubble and bricks and riprap and all that stuff so we poured in two bags of gravel and worked them into as many crevices as we could to keep these pavers steady and also the rainwater should percolate through it too and then we gave it all a sprinkling of diatomaceous earth to help keep the insect population down. Here we are spreading the gravel down into all those crevices and working them under the pavers, wearing gloves of course, and here goes the diatomaceous earth. This stuff is not toxic, but 
bugs don't like it at all. And we want to try to keep the cricket population down if we can. Okay, so now we're going to attach our planks to the futon. There's going to be very little space between these planks and the slats, barely a quarter inch or so. So the weight of someone walking across this bridge should be transferred down to the pavers and it'll be nice and strong. So thinking ahead to when there's a water feature here with pets playing and drinking from it and all that stuff, we used untreated lumber, but it's okay to use treated lumber. Just check the label that's usually stapled to the end and it'll let you know what chemicals are going into your space. So the end boards will be overhanging the futon on three sides, so we're going to strengthen those areas with construction glue. And now we're going to tack the boards into place. And to make the pattern as even as possible, we're going to use a spare board as a spacer. So it's a good idea to leave expansion room between boards and you can leave a lot less space than we did but we wanted to see the spaces from a distance because if you put the boards close together the bridge will look more solid like a table if you like that look. The spacers will stay in place and then we'll tack the planks in each corner with the brad nailer and two inch brads and they'll go right through the corner of each plank into the futon edge below. We're about ready to move in a more decorative phase um, and after this is painted we're going to drive these brass nails into the center of each plank but really all we have to do now is get our friends to test it out well they might be a little reluctant at first but finally we get a big smile we like this bridge but will it be strong enough for our heaviest friends seems that it is would you say we were off to a good start with this bridge? <laughs> Soon, we're going to show you how to make some easy, strong railings for the sides and more on how to choose colors for your favorite garden projects. Visit StephanieMcCarthy.com for more Love for a Country House. Click the Sun logo to subscribe. <laughs>